How are you guys doing? You guys are awake? <laughs> awesome. My talk today is New Year, New You, but with a question mark, right? Because, you know, we, we want to make resolutions and we want to make changes every year, but how many of us do we really take the time to stop, think, and reflect upon our life? How many? Anybody really do that? A lot of us don't. You know, we're just too busy. We're too distracted with like everyday things, external things that don't really give us the time to really just make time for ourselves, you know, to deal with ourselves. And every year we claim this is the year. This is the year that I'm going to make that change, right? This is the year that I'm going to achieve that goal. But how are you going to do that? How, if you never take the time to stop, think, reflect? Not only that, but to really put in the work that change requires of you so that you can change. And that's why resolutions are really hard to make. They're really, easy to, they're, they're really easy to make, but they're hard to keep. Easy to make, hard to keep. So you don't have to really worry about if you've succeeded before, because there's really a bit of good news that I want to share with you. Past failures doesn't mean you're going to fail in the future. Just like past successes doesn't mean you're going to succeed in the future. So really, you have a, you have a choice every single time to do it again and do it right. So whether you have kept your resolution or that you have succeeded at your resolution or not in the past, doesn't really matter. The one thing that we know for sure is that you're not the same person you were last year or the year before that or the year before that, whether you want to admit it or not. Because we're constantly changing. Our bodies have changed. Our minds have changed. Okay? We're always changing. And this year, you have another opportunity. This year, you have another chance. You get another 365 days to really invest in yourself. But now, you're a little bit more experienced. You have a little more wisdom under your belt to really make a difference in your life, and potentially in the lives of others. So a healthier, newer you, right? That's what we want. But it's going to require more than just looking at your physical aspects. It's going to require more than just diet and exercise. So if you, were, if you weren't here a lot at my last talk, I talked a little bit on the different aspects of our lives. And we did an exercise that kind of assessed what was really important to you. And we talked about areas like relationships, business, finances, your emotional state, your spiritual state, your environment, those kind of areas. Your intellectual state. So you're going to have to look at those as well. Because it's not just, I'm going to run, I'm going to work out, I'm going to eat better. But what about the rest of your life? And so my goal with today's talk is that you walk out of here with some tips or some ways that you can look at yourself, that you can assess your life, so that you can deal with darkness, the darkness that happens in our lives, with the stresses of lives a little better, so you can sharpen your mindset, and then you can embrace life. This year, you have an opportunity of a lifetime. You get to invest in yourself, to make a long investment into yourself. And I want you to really remember this. The journey towards a newer you is going to require you to take a hard look at the current you, okay? If you're gonna know where you're going, you gotta know where you're at, okay? You're gonna have to stop, you're gonna have to think, and you're gonna have to reflect. Now, the first thing is we need to do an assessment, okay? Because the journey towards the newer you is gonna require a hard look at the current you, we need to do an assessment. We need to think about where you are right now, where you're going. What's getting in the way? And what kind of skills 
strength and resources you have available to you right now that you can access. And so in terms of the assessment, we're going to look at each of those areas and see what kind of questions I can ask of myself so that I can get some answers and so I can get some perspective. When it comes to where you are today, you can make a list of what are you grateful for. You can count your blessings. You can start a gratitude journal. I have one. Daily gratitude journal or weekly or monthly or yearly, however you want to do it, but counting your blessings. You can take into consideration all the other areas of your life. Relationships, the ones we talked about. Emotional, spiritual. And then kind of make a scale from one to 10. One being that you're very dissatisfied, 10 being that you're very satisfied, and then ask, how happy am I with my health, with my fitness, my spiritual state? Go through them, my emotional state, my intellectual, my, my business, my finances, my relationships, and scale it one to 10, okay? And then ask yourself, how do you feel about this year? Are you looking forward to it? What is your outlook towards this year? Are you excited about it? Are you worried about it? Are you nervous, anxious, scared? How are you feeling about 2016? Okay, that's important to know. So in order to get a clear picture of where you are, because that's really important, and I wanna just give you an example. It's like, if you made the decision today that you're gonna to drive to New York, you're gonna drive from Texas, to New York, and the whole entire time you're driving with a New York map. You first need to know how to get out of your current state if you're gonna to go to your desired state, okay? You gotta get out of Texas first. And I have a, a funny story about that because I went running yesterday, and my goal was to run 10 miles. I didn't have a plan, I didn't know my route. I usually have my route, right? I got my run keeper, and I got my route all mapped out, and I know where I'm going. But yesterday I said, I'm just gonna go. I just started running. I was like Forrest. <laughs> I just started running, right? And I didn't know where I was going, but it didn't matter because I knew where I was. I was very familiar with the area that I was running at. And so if you know where you are, you'll figure it out. You can figure out where you're going. You can come up with a plan like that. But if you don't know where you are, you're gonna be lost. Imagine running in a different city with no map, no directions. You're not gonna be able to do it. But if you know where you are, you'll figure it out. So let's talk about where you want to be. Where do you want to be a year from now? You can look and list at possible opportunities that may come up for you this year, or things that you already know that you have lined up. Just write them down. And by the way, you might want to get a journal for all this. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of writing down. List. Make a list of healthy habits that you want to create for this year. Habits that are going to be very healthy for you. Habits that are going to have a significant impact into your life, moving you in the direction that you want to go. You can go back to the satisfaction exercise. Remember, you went from a scale of 1 to 10. And look at those areas and see where do you want that num number to be. If it's fitness, fitness and health, if it's at a five, what do you want it to be? Do you want it to be at an eight? Once you determine where you want it to be in each area, let's stay with fitness for this example, what is that gonna look like? What does an eight look like in your mind? If you can't envision it, because believe me, I had a hard time with envisioning stuff, Google it. <laughs> Google a picture of what eight looks like to you. And then identify the characteristics that is gonna require for you to embody so you can get to that eight. What, what specific goal do you have? Is it to lose weight? Well, what's that number? Right, what's that number? Write it down, right? And what do you have to do, perhaps on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis to get you there? Do you have to make changes to your diet, right? How, how often are you gonna work out? Are there any goals you want to achieve in this process, like run a 5K, or run a half marathon, or a full marathon? Write it down. Do you need a partner? Do you need a buddy? Sometimes having a fitness buddy could help you. I know Daniel helped me running. He's good at running. 
So it helps. Sometimes it helps to have someone to keep you accountable. Set your objectives. Develop the plan. But be flexible with your plan. Okay? So sometimes we set plans and we don't do it. We get disappointed and then we quit. So you got to be willing to be flexible and go with the change. Well, I couldn't get a buddy. Okay, I'm not going to work out. Well, no. What, what else can you do? Okay? The next area it's look at what's getting in the way, okay? On my last talk, we discussed that what gets in the way for the most part is our limiting beliefs, our limiting thoughts. And we talked about that at its root, everything is a thought. We talked about thoughts becoming your words, words becoming your actions, your actions becoming your habits, your habits create your beliefs and your beliefs create your life, okay? But at the beginning of that, it started as a thought, okay? So are there any limiting beliefs, any limiting thoughts, any habits that you can already anticipate are gonna show up as challenges or something blocking your way from achieving your goal, okay? And make a list of those so that you can come up with a way to overcome that or create a new thought. Are there any challenging situations that are going to show up? Because you've done this before. You've already attempted at being a newer, healthier you. And every time you try, something comes up. Write it down. Come up with a plan how you're going to overcome that. Are there any doubts? Are there any fears or temptations that you can already predict are going to challenge you, are going to make it hard for you to make your desired change? Write it down. The next section is in the assessment is your strengths, your skills, resources. Make a list. This, here's where you got to really look at yourself in, in the positive side. Sometimes that's not easy. We, we're real quick to just put ourselves down, but we're going to have to lift ourselves up a little bit and make a list of all the great qualities, skills, gifts that you may have. Take a look at your lessons. Lessons that you've learned in the past, okay? What did you do back then that helped you learn them, that helped you succeed, that could potentially help you this time, okay? Is there anyone that you can turn to? A friend, a loved one, a professional? Don't be afraid to ask for help because more often than not, they're going to be able to see things about us that we have a hard, a hard time seeing within ourselves. And so it's very beneficial to have someone there that can help us see ourselves. So once you have a clear picture, then, of where you are, then you can begin to plot your course towards where you're going. Okay? So newer, healthier you requires a hard look at the current you. You're going to assess where you are. Where do you want to go? What's getting in the way? And what skills and strengths and resources you have available to you? Now, you have all this information in your journal, and it's great. What do you do with it? Okay. How are you going to make it work? All that information is going to be a great asset to you, but it's going to require that you buckle up, that you show up, and that you do the work. Change requires work, okay? The same amount of work that it took you to go to school, get a degree, study, write down your notes, you had the books, you did all that. Most of us spend most of our lives developing our, mind, our skill set, and we put so much work into that. But we need to put the same amount of work into our mindset, the same. Right? You didn't go to school, and just, well, unless you were like a genius and you just sat there, right? But most of us went to school and we bought books, we had to take notes, we had to study, we had to review. We put in a lot of work. Why don't we do that with ourselves? We just, all of a sudden, magically something's going to happen? It's not. you got to make it happen. And then you got to remember that in terms of mindset, when you change the way you think, you change your life. Because if we go back to the quote, thoughts, words, action, 
habits, beliefs, your beliefs create your life. So that means your thoughts, it starts with a thought. So if you can change the way you think, you're going to change what you believe. You're going to change the way you live your life. So back to what I was saying about people developing their skill set, but not their mindset. Mindset should be more important, and it should come first. Because your mindset is going to determine all of your outcomes. How far are you going to go? How high are you going to go? Okay. And the mind is part of your body, right? The mind can benefit with as much exercise as you give to your muscles. You go out there and you build your muscles, but you, are you building your mind? Are you training your mind? And the mind can do amazing things, but it has to be trained, okay? You can read books, okay? You can go to talks, seminars, workshops. You can go to church. You can journal. Anything that can intellectually engage your mind is going to help you sharpen your mind. Okay? The other one, and this is the one I'm going to spend a lot of time on, is developing mindfulness. Does anybody know what mindfulness is or have an idea? Yeah, some of you do. Mindfulness is awareness of the present moment. It's the balanced and partial acceptance of the present experience. Basically, paying attention. I have a story of, that I read in a book. There was this monk who felt that he had reached enlightenment. And then he went to his master's, knocked in his room, took his shoes off at the front door, went inside and said, Master, I'm ready for you to deem me enlightened. Okay. On what side of the umbrella did you put your shoes on? Thank you, Master. He got up, took his shoes off, and he left. He wasn't paying attention. He didn't even know there was an umbrella by the door. Okay? So mindfulness is paying attention to whatever is happening right now. One way to, to, to develop mindfulness is through meditation. Okay? And everyone has their own idea of meditation. But what I tend to teach people is meditation is simply the art of letting go and letting be. Letting go of whatever's happening in the moment and letting be of whatever's happening in the moment. Okay? It's the practice of impartial and non-judgmental observation. Okay? Because we've had great improvements and great developments in our science and our technology, now there's proof now there's evidence of the many benefits of meditation. They have found that it actually calms you down. It can improve your social behavior. It can improve your intellectual aptitude, your attention, your concentration. You have more self-control. And you experience less anxiety, less depression, less stress. Here's a little secret about life. Life only happens in the present moment. Life only happens in the present moment. So becoming present and aware of the present moment is to become aware of life itself, is to become aware of God, universe, energy, whatever you want to call it, is to become aware of yourself. If you truly Truly, truly say what you mean, that you want a healthier you. If you truly say that this year is the year that you're going to change, that you're going to really spend time in yourself and invest in yourself, the only way you're going to do that is from a pleasant state. Because the way you are at your best is when you're in a pleasant state. The way you're going to maximize the use of your body and your mind is from a pleasant state. If you think about it, can you really make healthy decisions that are going to move you forward if you're sad, if you're anxious, if you're in fear, if you're depressed, if you're in, in conflict with yourself and others, if you're confused. Can you really make clear-headed decisions? I don't believe you can. I think you're going to be making decisions out of fear, and they're going to get you somewhere. And believe me, I always tell my clients, you can't fail at life. 
That's the truth. You can't fail at life. Because whether you go this way or you go that way, you're going to go to the same place. And that's to yourself. It's just a matter of what path you want to take. You want to take a longer path? That's okay. You want to take a shorter path? That's okay too. But it's how do you want to live today? Okay? That's the, that's the only difference. You're still going to find yourself. That's, that's the end result. Now, everyone has their own concept of meditation. Most people, when I interact with them, they tell me, oh, well, I don't, I don't, want, I don't, I don't know how to quiet my mind. I don't know how to empty my mind. Okay, that's true. That is a goal or the objective or the end result if you're going to be a monk. But I'm not a monk, and neither are you. And we're living in the real world, right, over here. We're not living in isolation, right? So why don't we try to change our perception a little bit? Instead of saying empty in your mind, how about we observe the mind, okay? How about we just sit there and just observe? Impartial, non-judgmental observation of the present moment, okay? And I want to try an exercise with you guys, okay? But you're going to have to get a partner. So find a partner. If you already came with a partner, great. But find a partner. And you may want to move your chairs around a little bit. It's okay. It's okay to move. So find a partner and face each other. You got to face each other. You can do three. Preferably two, but, you know, don't worry. Nobody's going to propose to anyone. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know. So, I want you to stare into your partner's eyes and just gaze. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Let me, let me explain it real quick. Let me set it up. And you're going to take turns. I'm going to give you each time to do it. Okay, all we're going to do is we're going to close our eyes, right? Whoever decides who's going to go first. Okay, decide who's going to go first. You're going to close your eyes, whoever goes first. And you're just basically going to tell your, tell your partner, what are you noticing? Okay, and what the idea is, you're gonna go from the very obvious until you make your way to the subtle, okay? So that means whatever you hear, if you hear somebody sneezing, coughing, if you hear someone talking in the background, if you hear somebody coming down the stairs, if you hear, whatever you hear, go through your senses. I hear so and so. I can smell such and such. I can feel this and that. Go from the very, very obvious. When you have nothing else to say about the obvious, go to the subtle. Meaning, I can feel my breath coming in and out of my nose. I can feel my belly rise and falling from, the, from breathing. I can hear or feel my heartbeat. I can sense life going through my veins. You may get that sensitive, okay? So decide who's gonna go first. I'm gonna give you a few minutes and just you don't have to yell or anything like that. Just tell your partner, what do you notice? And I'll tell you when to switch. And time. All right. So once you feel you go back here, go ahead and rearrange the chairs and face the front. And thank you for doing that, by the way. I know that sometimes that's not easy. But I would really like to hear some feedback. Like, how was that for you? Awesome. Very relaxing. Awesome. Relaxing. What else? There's calming. You were surprised that you noticed that you were calm? Oh, yeah. It's surprising to know how much calmer you can be. Yeah. Anybody else? Exactly. Who else? What other experiences did you have? The connection of certain things that, all, like the three of us that were doing it, we all had at least one of the same awareness 
Mm -hmm. So like the temperature we just felt like it was hotter or warmer. Or mm -hmm. So you can be aware of this, you can be having a collective experience even though you're having an individual experience. What else? I mean, some people would call that like time traveling almost. I mean, you know, because you could do it with your mind, you know? Anybody else? Depends what she wants to say. Oh, I just said because um, I meditate frequently and it's amazing. I wasn't expecting for you to put me right there, right then and there, but it's amazing how quick I dropped in there and how much she had trouble with it. So it took me back to. When I used to first, yes. like, am I doing it right? But I don't have that anymore. And so now I look forward to the colors that I see. And, you know, every, every time I meditate, it's different colors in my right. brain. Right. That's what I was going to ask. Did anybody see anything? Because even though you have your eyes closed, you can still see. Did anybody see anything? I saw the sun. You saw the sun. No? I just saw brightness. Brightness. So can you see the benefit of this? If you, if you had a practice, if you made a practice of it? And last night, like late last night, I was still working on, on last minute things for today and I got a message from someone that I haven't seen in ages or heard of in ages. And they saw, I posted a video of a previous talk in the event page just, so, just to kind of give people a feel for who I was and she saw the video. And so she started just like pouring out her anxiety, her depression, her anger, her this, just started pouring out, you know? And then she said, I tried meditation because so I didn't want to get medicated, you know? Meditate, don't medicate, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, <laughs> so I said, okay, well, when did you start? Well, I did it for 90 days. And then what happened? Well, I stopped because I was doing better. <laughs> it's not like medicine. You don't have to wean yourself off medica uh, meditation. Meditation, it, this is one of my teachers told me, it's a practice. You're gonna be practicing for the rest of your life, okay? And every time you practice, it gets a little bit better, like she was saying, it gets a little bit better. You don't have that, am I doing this right, right? The other part is detach from results. There is no, am I doing it right, am I doing it wrong? There is no that. At that time, whatever, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, however long you feel you can do it, and nothing really matters. You're simply observing. Just like when you go to the theater, a movie theater, you just watch the movie. You're not sitting there obsessing over every little thing that you're seeing. You're just enjoying the movie. You're being entertained. Watch your movie the same way, okay? The same way. So. That was just a little intro. That's something you can do anytime. Stop, any moment, in the car, pull over, or you're at work, go in the bathroom, something that just kind of, if you're feeling like you're getting out of the zone, out of harmony with life, bring you to the present moment. Because that's what you're gonna be doing when you start deepening your meditation. You're just not gonna be calling it out loud. Okay, you're just gonna be observing. Oh, there's a tree. But you don't have to say that's a tree. Just observe it. Okay? And, every, and then as you do it, you'll get deeper and deeper. But it's practice. A football player, okay, I'm good. I don't have to go to practice anymore, coach. <laughs> That's not the case. Ballet dancers, doesn't matter how advanced you are, the day of the show, you're doing basic ballet. You're at the bar, doing all your exercises. You're still practicing. But we don't practice that life. We're just expected to live it and know how to do it. Nobody taught us you need to practice life, okay? So, new year, new you, right? Yeah? Okay. How are you gonna ensure that you're gonna succeed? How are you gonna know that whatever you're doing, you're gonna succeed? Because we're all obsessed with knowing. I need to know that if I'm gonna do that, it's gonna work, okay? There's really no guarantee but I went to a talk, and John Maxwell was on a TV screen, and in that talk he says, the only guarantee 
you have that your life is going to turn out the way you want it to be is in your personal development. And that starts with your mindset. Okay? It starts with you. You are in control. You are in charge. That means you have to be purposeful about your thoughts. That means you have to be intentional about your day. Okay? And the thing about meditation is it, it's no joke. I mean, even if you don't want to call it that, call it whatever, it's my quiet time. I'm going to go and put myself on timeout. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, because I know sometimes the associations with our words can change what something is to us. You could hear, oh, meditation, oh, no, that's, that's that Buddhism stuff or Hinduism or Eastern, Medi Eastern religion stuff. No, call it self-observation. Call it breathing time. Call it me time. Whatever you want to do. Okay? It just brings, I mean, and I'm going to have to be honest with you. When I first started this journey, <clears throat> I started every Wednesday for an hour in a guided meditation group, right? Every, I went religiously every Wednesday for an hour. Okay? And I went for about eight months. And then I went on my first silent meditation retreat. And when I came back to my group med meditation, I couldn't do it. It was too noisy, too distracting. I just couldn't do it. So I left, and I started to do it on my own. I was doing it every day, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And I, whatever I could get in, I was doing it every day for almost four years. I may miss some weekends here, depending on what I was doing, because I was still teaching dance at the time. But even when I would go out of town to dance, I would make some time to go to the hotel room and meditate. I did it every day. And then my teacher told me, the last time I saw my teacher at the retreat, he said, one day, Angel, you're going to have to take meditation into your everyday life. It cannot stay, what they, in, in Buddhism they call it the cushion. You have a cushion where you sit. If it stays at the cushion, then you're wasting your time. You have to bring meditation to your everyday life. If you're washing dishes, you're being mindful. If you're driving, you're being mindful. If you're talking to someone, you're being mindful. If you're at work, you're being mindful. In fact, there's a teacher that I saw him speak on, on YouTube. He said that how many of us are really at work? How many hours do we actually spend at work doing work? Yes, we're doing it. But where are we? Are we at home? Are we still reliving that fight with our partners? Or that guy or that girl that did, that did something to us that pissed us off? We're not there. We're not being present and aware. And again, life only happens in the present moment. So to be aware of the present moment is to be aware of life itself. Is to be aware of God. Is to be aware of yourself. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate the time that I spent here with you guys.